So I wrote The Art of Immersion because I, I wanted to understand how digital technology is changing the way we tell stories. And one way I realized is that it's making them more immersive than ever before. Also, of course, more participatory. Um, now, immersion is a subjective state. It's a, a, a state of altered consciousness that is generally, uh, people identify it as sort of a sense of being there, of, of being in some space that doesn't actually exist. Um, but researchers have found that immersion can be measured by physiological responses. Uh, there have been some, uh, several experiments of people wearing virtual reality headsets uh, that, uh, and, and what they found is that when they were in a condition that they later described as being immersed, they um, showed increased sweat gland activity and actually decreased heart rate. We all know that you don't really need a, a VR helmet to feel immersed in something. We've been immersing ourselves in stories for, for um, centuries, if not millennia, and the question I have today is what's technology got to do with it? Before VR, before the internet, uh, before television, movies, there were books. And in 16th and 17th century Europe, um, books were the latest uh, medium, the latest technology. They yielded a sense of immersion that was never before possible. In Cervantes' satire, Don Quixote, uh, was a man so immersed in books that he uh, dried out his brain. And that's why he went tilting at windmills, because he had lost his mind from reading too much. Now, Don Quixote is often considered the first novel. Novels were different from earlier forms of literature because they, they weren't literate, um, legend or history. Uh, they, for the first time, offered an, uh, uh, an intimate look into the lives of other people. Then finally, just as the novel was becoming accepted about 200 years after uh, Don Quixote, um, it took on a new form, uh, the serial and it was written by a new type of novelist. Today, the works of Dickens uh, seem an example of the type of literature that's being threatened by whatever is happening to the book. But in his own time, uh, Dickens was very much the threat. It was a time when people were streaming into London and other cities because of the Industrial Revolution. They were working in factories, they were living in filth, and as often as not, they were dying in cholera epidemics. Um, it was people in these lower classes that uh, Dickens chose to write about. And they were the same types of people who were his readers. Um, the serial emerged because they couldn't afford to buy a book. And publishers, being uh, a young and innovative industry, um, decided that um, if they couldn't afford to buy a book, they could afford to spend a shilling on monthly installments. Um, and at the same time, you had uh, cheaper paper, you had uh, more efficient printing presses, and you had for the first time a railway system that uh, linked the country together. So serial publication really became feasible. Um, so serials were kind of the perfect marriage of technology, readership, and subject matter. But when the young Oliver Twist said, please, sir, I want some more, was not, it did not exactly resonate with the establishment. To them, um, as this review in an upper class journal uh, demonstrates, cricket, backgammon, and conversation were the more acceptable pursuits. In other words, games and social networking. Um, reading presented the same kind of problems as it did 200 years earlier. Delirium, escape from the atmosphere of reality. A hundred years later, along comes Orson Welles, 1938 at the age of 23. Using the still new technology of radio, he decided to really blur the, blur the line between reality and delirium. Um, in taking H.G. Uh, Wells's War of the Worlds uh, about an invasion from Mars, he decided, why not do a radio dramatization in the form of a newscast? Well, the next day, the newspapers reported widespread panic. Within moments of the first bulletin, phone calls began pouring in from hysterical listeners. Please, of uh, where can we go to save ourselves? Nobody tried anything like that again. But this mingling of fact and fiction, mingling of dreams with our daily business, turns up repeatedly and often when you least uh, expect it. 
Uh, in this medical textbook, for example, published in 2010, uh, we find a chapter on how to fight off a zombie invasion, written by students and a professor at uh, Carleton University and the University of Ottawa. Uh, they provide mathematical proof that only quick, aggressive attacks can save off the doomsday scenario, the collapse of society as zombies overtake us all. A few months later came the premiere of this TV show. Like Orson Welles' War of the Worlds, it came right at Halloween. Mercifully, though, it was not disguised as a news broadcast. Uh, but in this poster, you can glean some important tips. For example, don't take the bus. Don't take the train. Uh, whatever you do, uh, don't take the freeway. And for God's sake, don't stay in your condo. Now, there are other immersive experiences that don't involve media at all. Sleep No More, as Paula mentioned. Uh, it's been playing for more than two years at, uh, on West 27th Street. And um, it shows that we don't need any technology to feel immersed. It also demonstrates the kind of thing that you do need. Uh, last summer, I had a drink in London with Felix Barrett, the um, artistic director of Punch Drunk, the company that, uh, that produces Sleep No More. He told me, I've always been obsessed with the visceral, with things you can feel. And like The Walking Dead, like many uh, other hit TV shows, Sleep No More uh, displays a fascination with the visceral, with the messy guts of human life. Um, as in this scene when a blood-soaked Macbeth is being comforted by her, his wife after the murder of King Duncan. But whatever the medium, whatever the subject, immersion occurs when the boundary between fact and fiction is blurred. The barrier between the audience and the experience, um, the, our dreams become mingled with our daily business. Technology can be an aid, it can shape our response, but it's not required. What is required is stories that we care about, stories that grab us, and some things never change. Thank you.